Hello there, welcome to Talking TV. Balloons all around us. March is hectic for balloons here, but welcome to Talking TV. Uh, I've had a delivery in here, uh, so I'm going to pull out the first of those DVDs, and it is Dad's Army, The Lost Episodes. Now, to my knowledge, and somebody's bound to correct me on this, I don't think this has ever been shown on a free-to-air channel. I don't think it's been on yesterday. Please tell me if I've got that wrong. I've had a Google and I couldn't find it. I think it's only been on gold, which is what it was originally made for. So basically, three episodes of Dad's Army are missing in the archives. Uh, they're all from 1969. And to celebrate the 50th anniversary of these long lost episodes back in 2019, they remade them with a new cast uh, exclusively for gold. Uh, so you've got Kevin McNally, Robert Bathurst from Cold Feet, Kevin Eldon. And I remember seeing bits of these, but didn't watch them all at the time. So I'm going to give you a review. I'm going to tell you what I think of them. Um, I can tell you just looking at the back, and uh, I'll open it and show you the packaging in just a moment. So there's the back. You've got cast interviews, outtakes, and a behind-the-scenes gallery as well. But uh, this is a release from Network, um, and really reasonable, um, I have to say. You get three, all three episodes. It's available on Blu-ray as well, I noticed as well. So to complete your dad's army collection, I think this is a great idea. And I'd love to see some of the other gold projects come out on DVD. I know they did an extensive series on Only Fools and Horses. It's never been released. Um, Hancock's Half Hour has had episodes colorized lately. Again, that'd be a great DVD release, wouldn't it? I'm just going to open it up now. So you can see you've got... The Loneliness of the Long Distance Walker, you've got A Strike for Fraser, Under Fire, and then you've got specially recorded interviews with a lot of the cast members there, which we'll have a look at in a moment, and then uh, outtakes as well. So I'm going to have a look, I will report back, but uh, it's a, and I love the disc as well, that's a, that's a great little bit of artwork as well on the disc, isn't it? So, what did I think? Let's find out. So here are my thoughts on Dad's Army in the Lost Episodes and stay right where you are. We've got a fantastic interview in just a moment. So three episodes from Series 2 of Dad's Army are missing. 80 episodes of Dad's Army were made. So 77 still exist in audio and video format in the archives. Um, so in stepped gold to recreate the three missing episodes. And these were originally transmitted over August Bank Holiday weekend in 2019. Um, I don't think they've been shown on Freeview. You can tell me if I'm wrong. I don't think I had a quick look and uh, sometimes gold material ends up on yesterday. I don't think they have. Um, and as of 2023, these three episodes are still missing. So it's perhaps that a lot of people still haven't seen these because, as I say, they've been exclusive on gold uh, you know, for subscribers. So, uh, and it's really reasonably priced as well, really. And it's really reasonably priced as well. Uh, I have to say that it's brilliant value. Um, so episode one that you get on the, uh, the DVD is The Loneliness of the Long Distance Walker. So is a walker about to be called up well? No, thanks for his allergy of corned beef as it happens. But it's a great episode to start off this mini-series and it really introduces the cast nicely. It's, it does, it sets it up perfectly. Now, to research this DVD properly, I watched A Stripe for Fraser off here and the animated version of A Stripe for Fraser, which was made, I think, for BBC Store back in 2016. Do you remember BBC Store? I, I bought loads of things off BBC Store, and then it went went bust, didn't it? Um, but quite interestingly, the 2016 BBC Store version is 30 minutes long, and the, I, uh, the goal version, the Lost Episodes version here, is 33 minutes long. Um, now, the animated version is good. It's got the original soundtrack, of course, but without a shadow of a doubt, I do prefer this version. And uh, I'll, I'll go on about the pace in a moment when we see the interview that we're about to see. But I do think the pace is better on this version. Tell me what you think. Um, the The final episode is uh, Under Fire, a great, um, great episode, which is uh, it's got a great farcical bit at the end where they're trying to put out a fire uh, and it's just been captured perfectly. It's, it's, it's just absolutely farcical and... Um, 
it's it's brilliant. It's, it's it's great just to see this episode come to life once again. Um, the DVD is brilliant. We've got ten minutes of outtakes, which are really funny. Now, three minutes of these are on YouTube. Uh, on the UK TV Play channel, but there's an extra seven minutes here, and they are brilliant, they're really funny. There's lots of cast uh, interviews on this DVD. These are on the UK Play, UK TV Play YouTube channel as well for free, but it's great to see them included here by network. Um, so, without further ado, three episodes, you get the cast interviews, outtakes, and a fantastic behind-the-scenes gallery as well. So, plenty on there. Um, and as I say, if you've seen the, the Dad's Army remake film, just forget about that. This is studio-based, brilliant cast. Now you've got um, Kevin McNally, Robert Bathurst, uh, Kevin Eldon, David Heyman, Matthew Horn, Timothy West, Tom Rosenthal. Absolutely superb cast. And all shot, shot in front of a live studio audience as well. So without further ado, I was fortunate to uh, have... Uh, a chat with Kevin McNally, who played Captain Manrin in these Dad's Army The Lost episodes, and Kevin was absolutely fantastic. Um, so here's what he thought of his time working on Dad's Army. Um, right. So right now on Talking TV, as uh, as we've been reviewing Dad's Army The Lost episodes, it is a privilege, uh, an absolute privilege, to be joined by Manrin himself. Uh, hello to Kevin McNally. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. How are you all there? I'm very well, thank you. And I tell you what, I didn't see the lost episodes back in 2019. I was looking at my diary and I, I genuinely, I normally write down what I watch and I didn't see it. So it's been great to, to watch it after four years since it was made. Um, tell us a oh, little is bit. Is it that long? Wow. Oh, sorry, after you. It, I, I'm sorry, I didn't realise it was that long. It was. It was August Bank Holiday weekend when it was transmitted on Gold in 2019. Um, but let's go chronologically because I guess um, uh, Hancock does play a part. And I'd forgotten until I was uh, making tea earlier for the kids that it started on television. Television. You did um, a lost sitcom, didn't you? For um, was it BBC Four? I think years before you did it for the radio. No, no, um, no. We did the sitcom. We did the TV version afterwards. Right. Uh, the first time we did the, the, um, it was very funny actually because I, I was in Richmond, Virginia, shooting a show, and I got this really long email from um, Neil Pearson, sketching the idea of the lost uh, Hancock's, and I just wrote back yes, um, <laughs> because I've loved Hancock all my life. Um, and he tells a very funny story, actually. He said he pitched the idea to the, uh, to the BBC and they said, well, we'll do it if you can find a Hancock. And he thought, well, I better you know, spend the next six months finding one. And that night he, he met Andy Hamilton at a party and uh, told him his dilemma. And Andy said, look no further, Kevin McNally, you can't stop him doing it. So uh, I was cast within the day of the meeting with the BBC. And it was it was just brilliant to hear on Radio Four again at six thirty, and it was just event radio for those. Yeah, you know, I know they staggered the episodes to kind of uh, you know, which was br a brilliant idea to make. Kind of, you were waiting for the next missing Hancock's almost. Uh, even uh, it was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it was. It was such a. Uh, it's one of my proudest projects. Yeah. So from there. Uh, on to on to Manrin. Um, do you remember being uh, told? Uh, do you remember when you were offered the uh, the role from uh, UK TV or how it came about? Yes, I do. Um, I, I was uh, sitting at home actually, and uh, my agent called me and said that I when it wasn't even they weren't even searching. They wanted to offer me the role of Manrin. Well, I you know had a bit of a backstory with impersonating people doing um, performances of Hancock. And, I, I, you know, I, I'd loved Hancock for all my life. I knew I had a Hancock in me. But I was not for six. I mean, I don't even see myself as Mannering or, or uh, as Arthur Lowe. But I said, can you, can you ask them to give me three days? And I went down um, to the living room, locked the door, um, opened a bottle of wine, told everyone to stay out. And of course, you can binge watch uh, Dad's Army um, every day of the week. Uh, you certainly could then. And so I watched, it must have been about half the episodes that were ever made. And 
and I had a little practice and I looked at myself in the mirror and, and I thought, well, if, you know, if they've got a really tall act to play Wilson, uh, I can do this. So um, I said, I'll, I'll do it. And I had such a ball doing it. And the entire cast, of course, were, um, you know, we all knew that there were going to be people out there who might judge us for doing this. But we all, but, you know, our main thing, as was with, with the Hancocks, is that we don't do anything you can see the original people doing. And we're, we're plugging the gaps so that people can see stuff they've heard about. So I, I was glad that they gave me that time to decide. <laughs> I had to know 100% that I could do it because you don't want to go out there doubtful, you know. And, and even in 2019, and it was something that came, what, what I was thinking of when, when I was watching the DVD, is uh, even in 2019, studio sitcoms were you're, are in a bit of a decline. I mean, you've got Kate and Koji that was perhaps made after Dad's Army, the last episode. You've got Mrs. Brown's Boys, but it's a very rare thing that happens these days. And um, that, I mean, to do the rehearsals, perhaps like you did, and uh, there's probably only soaps such as Coronation Street and things like that that have the rehearsals like that you did. Yeah, it's a, it's a dying art form, certainly. Um, what was interesting was that for me to go back. Um, you know, after the sort of revolution of TV becoming like film, to go back with those big Dalek cameras and uh, uh, and for the audience as well, we were all very excited. I saw grown cameramen weep when the titles came up yeah. uh, for Dad's Army because it did, you know, we were all of a certain age and it took us back to a different time of television when we were all at the television centre or we were at Pebble Mill in Birmingham. And it was, it was very moving, actually. Um, of course, the wonderful thing about both Hancock and uh, Dad's Army, which I'm very grateful for, is there are many um, sitcoms of those years that would be unpal unpalatable to a modern audience now. The wonderful thing is that Goldman Simpson and Croft and Perry were delightful men who didn't have any sort of nasty prejudice. We and never had to change anything in any of the episodes um, uh, of, of Dad's Army or Hancock um, because they are perennial and uh, as, as beautiful now as they were then. Yeah. i tell you what was interesting. Um, I watched the animated reconstruction of uh, A Stripe for Fraser whilst researching this, as well as your version. And, and um, theirs is three minutes shorter, but it's like the, the lines, the actors go through the lines really, 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 really quick. But I'd say in this, I mean, genuinely, in your version, you got more laughs in some places. And, and that was interesting. Just by the, the pace, you seem to, uh, I don't, I, I, I watched it and it was like, it was on more than one occasion. You got some great laughs doing the, the lost episode. Whereas some of the lines when uh, when uh, Arthur Lowe and John LeMessurier were saying them in the, because uh, it's the original audio on a strike for Fraser, it was, uh, it, I think it went down better in your version on that one. Well, I've avoided watching that, although now that you've said that, I think it's the next thing I'm going to do. Ah. Um, <laughs> you can report uh, back and see what you think. It's, I, it's I, I genuinely think that, yeah. Yeah, but it's interesting, isn't it, because of different styles. Interestingly enough, um, on the Hancocks, we were always faster than they were right? Um, in a modern style. So I'm very interested to know that we are slower on the... I think it's because we got a lot of laughs, but a lot of that might be to do with the audience laughing because of the, the nostalgia. Yes. You know, so and there was, I remember there was a moment when Kevin Eldon said, because um, they don't like it happen, sir. And we really had to, we, we had to do it again because the audience laughed so much. So, that, so not to take anything away from the original and to put our stuff in perspective, there was a lot of nostalgic laughter that we got that wouldn't have been there if they hadn't done it in the first place. And the outtakes on the DVD just show you were obviously having a lot of fun and obviously trying to get the lines absolutely right and uh, the, the 10 minutes on the DVD yeah. are, uh, are fantastic. But there's an amazing story as well. Um, I think I remember from the time, is it during the start of Under Fire, you're wearing civilian, a civilian outfit Manring comes in on. And was it Arthur oh. Lowe that had that outfit um, last time it was uh, rented out? Is that right? That's right. The um, wonderful costume designer um, said, we've just found out that he comes in in, uh, uh, in a civvies and we haven't got any for you. So he literally ran in a taxi up to um, the, the clothes house 
brought it back and when he opened it he went oh my god you won't believe this he said the last tag in here is Arthur Lowe and we subsequently we researched together that it was for the 1970 movie and he wore it at the very beginning when he was speaking to the people um, from the back of a, a cart I think um, I was quite offended that it fitted it fit me um, <laughs> but uh, but what but what an extraordinary you know if, if you did believe in any sort of faith or, or bizarreness it was it was just extraordinary to see that we were both quite moved actually uh, un unbelievable. I mean, uh, but there's some great episodes, like you say, and they're just old, gr great old fashioned. Uh, the loneliness of the long distance walk is a great episode. Um, and uh, just like you say, the attention to detail with the sets and the uh, the uniforms, the sets the set I couldn't was believe. Absolutely, the work on the set. When 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 we walked in on the first recording uh, for our rehearsals during the afternoon before um, TX. Uh, I couldn't believe it. It was just beautiful. It's exactly as I remember it from the kids watching. Um, tremendous work. The director uh, then was, uh, he found the original, a lot of the original uh, uh, camera um, schedules. So he tried to shoot it exactly as we thought it had been shot then. So it was, it was really an archivist's dream, really. <laughs> Um, everything we try to recreate uh, perfectly. Oh, I, th I think you did a great job. And uh, finally, I was going to give mention to uh, Timothy West because he played, of course, Private Godfrey. But um, if memory serves me correctly, it, it was meant to be Bernard Cribbins. Does that mean he had less time to kind of familiarise himself with the scripts and get in with the rest of the cast? Is that is that what happened? Yes. Um, Tim was wonderful. And yes. I can't imagine anyone else doing it. Um, before we knew that Tim had taken over, I was, it was a lifelong ambition of mine to work with Bernard Cribbins, um, oh. and I was very excited, but sadly, you know, he was a great mate of, of, of Tim's, and sadly, due to a, a bit of a decline in his wife's health, he decided that it wouldn't be fair to go and do this, so he pulled out, and Tim came in at the last moment, in many ways, um, just by chance, obviously, Bernard was amazing and I did so want to work with him. Um, Tim was the perfect Godfrey. I mean, it was miraculous, uh, as with, with, with all of the others, actually. The miraculous uh, um, recreation of, of, of the original actor playing the original character. But I do regret never having met Bernard now that he's gone. But absolutely, uh, to back what you say, Timothy West, it was like he was just made for Private Godfrey. It really was. Um, Kevin, thank you so much yes. for um, coming on. It's really appreciated to talk oh, yeah, about I'm sorry I'm disrespected there. Somebody just brought me my, somebody just brought me my burger. Perfect yeah. timing. Perfect lovely. timing. Thank you for joining yeah. us yeah. on Talking TV. Thanks, Kevin. And as a little bonus, my kids have absolutely got into Doctor Who, um, Josie, Eric and Arthur. And uh, I was telling Kevin at the end of the interview and Kevin really, really kindly invited them in to say hello. And Josie got to ask a couple of questions about Doctor Who and his time on Doctor Who. So, um, you know what? I've included these on the video because there's some Doctor Who fans out there. Uh, and uh, I'm yet to see the uh, the Kevin McNally Doctor Who episodes. My kids have watched them over and over again with the uh, Weeping Angels. So here is what he had to say. Uh, what Thank was you it you wanted see. to ask, uh, Kevin? Go on. What was your best moment being with Jodie Whittaker? Oh, what was your best moment being with Jodie Whittaker? There you go. It's when she sang Happy Birthday to me on my birthday in the makeup trailer. Oh, there you go. But apart from that, the, but apart from that, time? it was... Um, it, go on. Did oh. you enjoy time with her when filming it? Oh, did you enjoy time with her when filming it? Um, I absolutely loved it. And she... Um, I loved um, the first scene with her because uh, she was so frantic, you know, talking about this. The um, weeping angels. That I I couldn't keep a straight face. She made me laugh so much. You've been watching that one. Yeah, I'll miss her as the yeah. doctor. Actually, well, come, there you go. Uh, there, oh, thank you. oh, there you are. There, thank, thank there you are. Right, bye, bye, darling. So I hope you enjoyed that Dad's Army, the Lost episodes. And don't forget to like and subscribe. More talking TV coming very very soon. That's it for me. Bye bye.